Every time I come to India, I'm struck by several things. Firstly, the absolute poverty that our farmers are still living in today. It's very easy to lose sight of the fact that there are still millions of people in India living a very, very basic way of life. The second thing that strikes me is the sheer dedication of our staff. The LSPs, the local service providers, who come from the villages themselves, and they can see that through their intervention, they're helping their friends, their families, and the people they've lived with all their lives. And finally, I'm struck by the sheer scale of the issue or the challenge that we still face. There's never going to be a day when I can turn around and say poverty in India has been eradicated. But in our own small way, I think we're doing a lot to try and help the number of people we can meet. And there's a clear case for us to continue for many years to come into the future. I can't believe it's been 10 years. And I thought the best person to tell the story should be Yasmin Hilton, our newest trustee. So she came to India with me in January to meet some of our wonderful team and our beneficiaries and to hear firsthand of the impact we are making. Yasmin was keen to know how it all really started, so she asked our fantastic chairman in India, Vasant Subramanian. We've been out in the villages today and it's been a fantastic trip. But tell me, how did you get started with Shibya and Nirpa? Um, Long story short, about 10 years ago, um, eight and a half years ago, I met up with Oli, Oli Donnelly. And uh, we were having uh, tea at one of Calcutta's most famous tea houses called Fleury's. And we decided that, you know, uh, there's something that needs to be done. And Ollie had this uh, shine in her eye about doing something different for rural Bengal. And that's where the um, story really started. It started with just Vasant and me. And since then, we have grown to a team of our wonderful patron, Nick Jenkins, 13 trustees in the UK and India, Victoria and me here in London, five management in Calcutta, and a team of 53 field staff this year. You may have heard of our flagship programme, Poultry Development Services. So we asked Chandrani, who leads the programme, what her proudest moment has been. Well, uh, when actually women come forward, women who even did not want to pose for a single photograph and stayed behind the curtains and now actually comes forward and tells me about her stories, about her hopes, about her dreams. The woman the other day told me it, it was her dream to uh, be, have a concrete house for herself. She never thought in her lifetime that would be possible, but now it has been possible. She has an income of her own and her children are going to school. The girls are continuing their education. She is so, so proud. And that is the most proud moment for me ever, ever and ever. And so Yasma met some of our PDS farmers and heard their fantastic stories. <laughs> and Chandrani, we've got ducks here and we've got chicks here, right? Oh, It's really fantastic in here. There's clean feed. It's very clean in here. It's very cool for the chicks. And they're beautiful. They're absolutely wonderful. She has to carry the water from the river. So she has to bring the water from the river. Mm. So we have electricity here, but we don't have water here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's still Absolutely. not an easy life, but she's done remarkably well. And the poultry's really helped her take out the loan. Absolutely. And with her, her husband's itinerant work, they can't rely on that, but they actually have a regular income from the poultry. Absolutely. So she's able to take the loan, build the house, and live you know, in relative comfort, of course, for here. <laughs> what a great story. Look at that. What a fantastic story. Shabash. Shabash. Then we asked Joe, whose pet project is Agri-Management Services, what his best moment has been. The best moment has been always helping the farmers. I mean, I always feel that it is the farmers who actually feed the nation while the farmers are dying because of hunger. I mean, what an irony. 
so if i am and my team is able to help these farmers to earn a living through actually agriculture there's nothing better than this and not only for me for the whole country and for every profession doctor engineer chartered accountant whoever it may be they will still need to eat three meals a day and the only person who produces it is the farmer and the irony is the farmer is starving while feeding the nation so if i am able to help that farmer to earn some revenue nothing better than this for me and for everybody in this whole team including you all in because you are the one who are actually getting us the money and the resources to help us to do this and so yes we met some of our ams farmers seeing firsthand the difference this program is making so this is a field of potatoes and this is a three month crop which does not belong to our farmers and we've seen the potatoes, we've just filmed them, they're quite small. Looking on this side now, these plants are the same potato plants but they are only two months old and the size of the potato of our farmers is huge by comparison. They are fresh, they are absolutely free of any fungus or disease and the crop is and no chemicals have been used and we no use no chemicals. no chemicals it's all preventative work and this side they've got fungus and the chances are that some of the potatoes will not be edible or usable at the end of it so here's a really good example of the treatment and the way our farmers operate versus without the help from shivia this is our farmer sab unka and this is completely so bio he's saying all the goodness that we've had from mm. this side has come into our heads from him. Well done. Yes. Mario. You have a better quality. Well done. Of well done. Well done. Welcome. Well done. Shabash. 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 Yes. And it's in a liquid format. Like, it's uh, a cow dung and cow uh, urine. Mm -hmm. And this is actually sprayed in the, in the fields. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so this is again free of cost. Completely. Completely. Complete. Cow urine and cow dung. So yeah. they have no That's cost it. at all. That's it. Right. Got to ferment that for 15 days. Okay. Okay. Yasmin then saw the benefits of putting our farmers into groups. Back in London, Yasmin met some of our key supporters, including Peter Englander from the APAX Foundation. Peter took a leap of faith in Shibia and provided us with our first ever major donation. So Peter, there are 160,000 charities in the UK. Why did you pick Shibia? We picked Shibia because primarily we were impressed with Ollie, impressed with her enthusiasm, impressed with what she'd done, Impressed with her ideas and she just gave a really dynamic uh, presentation about what she wanted to achieve in India and what she saw Shivya becoming. It was the founding donation that actually got Shivya off the ground and that was really important so thank you very much for that. Well it was a great pleasure to be involved in Shivya at the early, early stages and we're very proud of the Apex Foundation that we were. And Artemis took over the baton from Apex, and since then it, it has turned into the most wonderful partnership. We do look for charities where we do believe the, the staff can get engaged in, in, in some degree. Uh, we also like charities that are, are maybe not too big. Um, we much prefer smaller charities where we believe the money might be pivotal in helping them get to the next stage. Um, and also, we obviously have to have a, a great faith in the person running the charity. I think, if, particularly if it's a smaller charity, that's a key element of, of the whole picture. Together, we came up with a new idea for staff engagement. Um, you know, a lot of staff members had expressed to me, uh, in sort of general form, uh, a worry that their, their children were growing up in quite a privileged um, environment. So we're a bit worried how they keep their, their children grounded. Uh, and so Ollie and I talked about this and it kind of developed quite quickly into a sort of idea that, well, well why don't we actually organize something in India uh, with parents and a child of theirs from, from Artemis going out into West Bengal um, and actually experiencing what it's like maybe to, to have less um, material goods 
Um, but also on the other angle, also for, for children to experience perhaps the richness of the culture in terms of the relationships and the connections that people have in, in that environment as well. And, and after that, it would have remained a good idea had Ollie not sort of picked it up and run with it and done an awful lot of work to make it a reality. Um, so thank you for doing that because the feedback we've had from the first trip was, was very strong and we're now about to embark on the second trip. Yeah, in the monsoons, in July, <laughs> yeah, we're in July next, they're going yeah, to head out not? in the monsoon time. Yeah, so, so I would say the demand this year, particularly now that the word's got out of what we're doing, has been very high and I'm, I'm really encouraged by that. Um, Me too. So it's going to be fascinating to get the feedback from this trip. And, you know, uh, fingers crossed we might be able to do something again in the future because um, I think we both agree that it, you're never quite sure what the implications of a trip like that are, on, particularly on the young people. Um, but it does have impact and I, I think it could be, you know, very valuable uh, experience for anybody that goes on it. There's a real partnership between Shibia and Artemis. Yes, it is. Um, I mean, I think... That, that obviously works two ways. I mean, I think we we're, we're, we wouldn't be supporting Shibuya for this length of time unless we felt we were getting back uh, an awful lot. Um, and I think the best relationships are where it's two way, where yes, we're, we're providing finance, but we're getting back an awful lot in terms of the experiences of staff and uh, you know their ability to grow by being involved in the whole Shibuya experience. So it's, it's definitely a team kind of approach. And there's so many other wonderful supporters who have helped us on our journey. When I got introduced to Shivia, to Ollie and Victoria about just over two years ago, um, being asked to be involved in the House of Commons dinners. And, and one of the things that struck me immediately was just how friendly uh, and grounded the charity was. Um, there's also just just stunning results in terms of what they're achieving in India. The, um, they're quite inspirational, they're doing incredibly impactful work, changing the lives of communities, both in terms of uh, the sustainability but also the educational factor. Um, so sustainable change, impacting on lives, and, uh, and they're doing it with a smile on their face, which is fantastic. Alpity supports Shivia because they uh, transform lives by giving people the opportunity to do things themselves, and they do it with dignity. Hello, Shivia supporters. Uh, I want to congratulate Shivia on completing its 10 years in India as a uh, organization which works with the common people uh, at the right levels. I believe that uh, Shivya has managed to do what a lot of other organizations have not. Uh, I would like to continue my support and help to them. And I believe that Ollie and her other trustees have done just a superb job and I wish them all the best for the next 10 years. I'm, I'm delighted to join Shibia as our CFO, our Chief Financial Officer, and you've been out to India several times now. What um, for you has been the best, best moment? I think the first time I actually went, saw the villages and saw what we were doing and recognised what huge contribution was being made. So Chris, have I got you for the next 10 years? Probably. <laughs> That's all I need to know. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nishant Lalwani and I've been involved with Shubia now for eight years um, in different governance roles. Um, I've been very, very proud to be associated with um, this wonderful organization over that time. Um, and, you know, I've worked with a number of NGOs, but what's unique about Shubia is the blend of passion and real thoughtfulness, which they bring to their work. There's an incredible... Uh, humility which Ollie and the team have which goes through all of their work but that's combined with a really rigorous analysis of what's working and what isn't and how 
they can really empower the lives of the poorest in West Bengal. Now, the most successful program, of course, um, that they fund is um, the poultry program, so it would be difficult for me to leave you without um, a chicken joke. So here it is. Why did the chicken cross the road? The answer, of course, is that it didn't cross the road because the families which should be a partner with were so lovingly tending to its every need that it had no desire to go anywhere. Ollie, you can, you can use that one in fundraising if you like. Thanks and bye. It is not just about the money. It's about all the time and skills we have benefited from. EFG with Office Space, Salesforce developing our data management system, Sophia Akash Foundation with strategic support, a number of law firms including Reed Smith, Herbert Smith, but most notably Clifford Chance and Skadden Arps. Clifford Chance is enormously proud to have worked with Shibia for a number of years. The team is energetic, compelling and engaging. I always find them to be highly professional and conscientious. They strike me as being a really efficient and lean organisation, yet they never seem to be under-resourced in what they do. And finally, I'm always really impressed, they've got a great evidence base for the effectiveness of what they do. And they're, they're an NGO that's committed to continually learning about what they're doing. And we hope to continue to work with them in the future for as long as we can. We certainly do. Here at Scadden, we're proud supporters of Shivia because the work that they do really does change people's lives. And it's incredible how much they have achieved in India over the last 10 years. Hi, my name is Carrie Cardio and I work for Salesforce as a solution engineer. I chose Shivia because of their work providing chicks, feed and training to the poorest families in India, particularly women. The difference they've made to so many lives already in the last 10 years is inspiring. So here's to another successful 10 years. Go Shivia! And we want to thank all those of you who have come to see our work over the years and have offered moral support and ideas. Shivya, congratulations on reaching your 10 year birthday. Here at Penquist we still talk about our fantastic trip to Calcutta and seeing the inspiring work that you all do. You are changing the world and here is for the next 10 years. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! So Oli, just tell me what has been the best moment or moments in the last 10 years for you? For me, I think there are two parts, the team and then the beneficiaries. And then the, the women and the farmers are at the heart of our work. For me, the, the confidence in the woman um, is something which is hard to explain through data and through numbers, but it's, it's always a wonderful moment when you hear the stories and you, you can feel the difference to these women's lives. So that's a continuous thing, but over the 10 years, there are many, many, many more stories um, like those. Um, with, the, with the farmers and the AMS, I, 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 just the pride we're seeing now, the results are coming through. I, I just think it's fantastic and it gives me great encouragement that we're making a real difference here through the AMS uh, project. Um, in terms of my own team, our own team, Shivya and Nerdin's team, they're gaining experience, they're gaining respect from the farmers and, and the vision we all have is something which I I um, feel very proud of and something which is not a best moment but it certainly gives me great hope that we'll be able to continue making a real difference to people's lives going into the next 10 years. Yasmin ended by asking Vasant, why do you think people should support Shavir? Okay, that's a very, very deep question. It all begins to make, re make eminent sense as to why one needs to do something like this. When you look at 
what you have in comparison to people who have really next to nothing. How do you then start identifying a program which does what it says, is effective, has got indices which are measurable, has got a team which is dedicated to creating value and the vision to follow through with what they say. And now I know I'm blowing my own trumpet. I think we at Nirvan and Shivya do a brilliant job. So just as we get people to agree to walk towards us when we offer them livelihood models, I do believe that you know we have reached a maturity in our model per se where donors would like to walk towards us and say, yes, these people know, know their stuff, doing. know what they're doing. They do create a difference. And these are the palpable changes that they make in terms of you know, changing lives. Well, I think you've actually been very modest. I've seen just in one day how people's lives have not just been changed, but actually transformed through some of your program. So, you know, I would say, this is an organization that is really, really making a difference with their people. And it's people make the difference real. So please give us your money. <laughs> thank you. So thank you all. And we want to end this film by showing you a rather unexpected, but wonderful moment. Woo! This award goes to a small charity with limited resources, but relentless ambitions and powerful families. It helps create livelihoods, boots, income, and inspire permanent change. Oh my God! Who is Jimmy? Whoa! 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 Congratulations, guys.